Welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. Now in today's video we're going to be looking at this and this is the Joya Lens JL249MS Plus. That's a lot of words. Now essentially this is a digital microscope and I have actually fairly recently looked at a digital microscope. I'll stick a link to that video up in the corner but this one sort of caught my eye because it seems to be designed for me. I mean, obviously it's designed for other people as well as me. It just seems like it's going to be perfect for me recording things here for you guys on YouTube. And if you fix things like I do and you share it on the internet, then it might be good for you too. Or even if you don't, I think it could be brilliant. But I do feel like there is one fatal flaw with it, but we'll talk about that in a little while. But uh, yeah, we can uh, have a little look what's inside the box. Uh, so first off we've got an instruction manual does look pretty sort of standard for a digital microscope but maybe aha this reveals a few additional secrets we won't talk about it properly just yet you can see uh, when we assemble it but you'll get some idea soon okay so this is our screen and indeed the microscope and we've got some uh, connections here. We've got a uh, mini HDMI, mini or micro. I can never remember which way around it is. I think that's a mini. Uh, we've got a USB-C connector. We've got some status LEDs there and we've got an SD card slot. And yes, this is the microscope itself. It has uh, changeable lenses. There are some lenses included in here. So we'll have a look, little look at those shortly. We've got the aforementioned different lenses. Uh, we've got a uh, remote control. That looks similar to the remote control I had on my old microscope. Interesting. Uh, what have we got here? So we've got a USB-C to USB-A cable because this is sort of designed for more than electronics. You can actually get like, look at s like slides and stuff. Speaking of which, look, there we go. There's our little slide viewer. And you can put the slides in here and it's got a little light underneath it and uh, yeah that's pretty cool i don't think i'll ever use that though got a uk power brick now at the time of recording it is only available on amazon us but obviously i reckon they'll probably be bringing it to the uk market soon because well it's got a uk power plug comes with a 32 gigabyte memory card I never really trust free memory cards with things. I think if you're going to have a memory card in something and you really want to keep the recordings, then something like a SanDisk memory card is what I would choose and what I will use in this. And look at this. It has a parts tray that can go around the base of the microscope. And this is why I found it quite interesting because when you're filming stuff and repairing things, you know, it's quite handy to have somewhere to chuck all your bits and pieces. And having a sort of bigger surface as well for larger boards and things like that to support them, that will help. Okay, so this is our arm for adjusting the height of the microscope. Oh, okay, so we've got an HDMI cable there, the mini or micro mini HDMI to a standard HDMI. So you can plug this into a TV or a capture card or anything like that if you want to. Ah, I see. So we can power it by USB if we've got a USB thing at the desk, which we do. And uh, yeah, the power cable takes that USB and plugs into the light with this guy, the back of the microscope with this guy. And there you can turn on and off the power and adjust the brightness of the lights. Great, excellent, we like to see it. Now this is something I've not seen on a microscope before and something that I think is going to be helpful. It's got helping hands. So uh, yeah, we can use this to hold on to circuit boards and things like that while we're doing soldering, which I think should be a good thing. I don't know how it's gonna work in practice, but it feels handy, I guess. So yeah, we can pop our circuit boards in there. Okay, so uh, yeah, it seems to be some rubber heat protective mat. Again, love to see it. And uh, here is our base. So it's got our lights on it with the uh, power connector for the lights down here. 
And uh, yeah, this is our adjustment arm. Right, okay, so we can start assembling now. Now, as the building of this is fairly straightforward, let's whiz through it. And while I'm doing so, let's shout out all those awesome channel members who have joined the channel and helped support it financially. You can help this channel just by subscribing and liking this video, but becoming a channel member just helps me afford to buy stuff like this that you're seeing on screen now. So uh, yeah, thank you so much to all our channel members. And this month they are the Kip fans who are Matt Lovey's, JRC Electrical, For The Burbs, Wayne Cornish, Mike Cass, Rob Lynn, Scott Made A Thing, Michael Wood, Draco MacGyver, Rebecca, Tom Wood and Abigail. Then you have to get up really early to beat the Kip early birds who are Dean Ball, Sean Cable Smith Electrical, Tim Salt, Sorcerer Stan, Mark C and Will Bennett. Then, oh my goodness, I love these guys so much and they love me too because they are the Kip lovers and they are Bella Webster, Stestix Fix, Lawrence, Props Retro Fix, Chelsea B and Shade Noah. And then right at the top there we've got our amazing Kip Nutters who support this channel at the very top tier and they are our Kip Nutters and they are Becky Becky Booba, Alan Green and the My Mate Vince fan club over on Facebook. Thank you so much to my Kip Nutters and all my other channel members over on Patreon, Facebook and YouTube. Anyway, we're ready to go. I might not keep this part on it because this is a tool holder and you can put your screwdrivers down these little holes. And yeah, we need to build up our base. So I did wonder if it would actually sort of clip to the microscope base, but it doesn't. It's just sort of a separate entity and it can break down into those four component parts. But that's actually pretty cool. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed with this. So far, so good. But yes, it does have a bit of a problem, which we will go into in a moment. Now, something I didn't mention was the price of this. This on Amazon.com at the moment is around about $200, which is about 160-ish pounds. But I'll also show it to you from like the angle that I'm looking at it, because you don't fully get to appreciate it from overhead. It does look like a sort of quite a professional setup, actually. Well, there we go. So we've got the menu there, which we uh, got up by holding down the M button. So what options do we have here? We've got resolution, exposure, date stamp, sharpness, freeze, contrast, color. All pretty, pretty self-explanatory. If we press menu again, there's a Wi-Fi setting, which I find very interesting. I think you can download some software on your computer that allows you to do measurements and things and see the microscope. And I think it connects over Wi-Fi. I'm never gonna use that functionality. I'll be completely honest with you. I don't really like installing random bits of Chinese software on my computer. So I'm going to stay out of that at the moment. But if you want to do it, then go for it. Uh, frequency, we'll make sure that's on 50 Hertz. Yes, it is. A quick look at the resolution settings. So there we go. We can have it in Ultra HD at 24 frames a second, um, quarter HD at 30 frames, uh, full HD at 60, full HD at 30, etc. etc. I'm going to put it on the QHD, I think. And something that this camera doesn't do, which is so annoying because I think this could be perfect for me is it doesn't record audio. Now you're probably wondering why would you want a microscope to record your audio? Well because I'm filming with two cameras at the moment so that one and that one and obviously this acts as like a third camera and to sync them all up so they're perfectly in time I use the audio track. So there's the audio track from my front camera Here's the audio track from my above camera. And yeah, you use that to sync up your video files. But if this doesn't have audio, it, you're stuck because you can't easily sync them up. This is how I used to sync up the audio on my old microscope. Let me give you a demonstration. So if I put it out of the menu and just start recording. There we go, it's recording. I'd let it start recording for a few seconds and then I'd wave my hand underneath it and go one, two, three, four. And that's essentially 
I know that each time my hand passes under the microscope, that's one of my counts. And I kind of got into a habit of doing that, but sometimes you just forget to do it. You get the microscope out and you start soldering and you're like, oh no, I didn't do it. And then it sort of is really hard to get everything in sync. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go back to doing the one, two, three, four. Right, let's um, see how it looks. So um, I'm going to put this uh, Game Gear power board on the helping hands. Now that is actually really good quality. That looks fantastic. I mean, it looks great on the screen. Obviously when you're watching this back, you'll be watching the microscope's recording of this. The problem with the helping hand is wobble. So um, this soldering iron isn't on, but if I'm going around and soldering things, it does make a bit of wobble. I suppose it's fine for moving around the board. Um, but yeah, if I keep touching it, like with the soldering iron, that wobble will uh, be annoying. But let's take it off the hands and just put it down. There we go, wow. Quality on that is really nice. That's really good quality. You, yeah, you can't argue with that at all. Um, anything else interesting? Oh, yeah, let's have a little look at a um, have a look at this little uh, analog stick out of an Xbox controller. I think. Again, the quality is fantastic. It's focusing beautifully. That looks so good. Hmm. I'm impressed. I think the addition of the helping hands is a good idea, maybe sort of as a, for using it. And you know, if you're not recording this, but as soon as you start touching it, it's a bit wobbly. So yeah. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let me just rejig this slightly and we'll use the light box that it came with and some of the slides and we can have a little nosy and see how good quality it looks on the sort of different lens. Okay, so I've rearranged things slightly and I've put on lens D, which focuses between four mil and five mil and I've had to drop this right down. And uh, let's have a little look at stuff under the microscope with the little light box. Now apparently this is a honey worker bee's leg. Sorry, little guy. Look at that detail. That is mental. Look, you can even see the tiny little hairs. His little clawy leggy thing. Let's try a pine stem. Oh, wow, look at that. The quality is just amazing. Look at the detail on that. Okay, so uh, we've got a honeybee's wing. Poor old honeybee. Is mental. I mean, I never do anything this close up, but I guess if you do, just insane. Right, let's have a look at the epidermis of an onion. Because, yeah, why not? Yeah, just the quality of that is just mental. Honestly, that is insane. If, you know, if you're into like looking at stuff in this kind of detail, Actually, let me show you what it looks like on the slide. So that is the slide and that little dot there is what we were looking at. So as a microscope, it is magnificent. It really is. It's really difficult for me because this is like almost, almost the perfect microscope for me because it's got a really crisp, clean picture it's very adjustable. We've got the tool rail, we've got the helping hands, we've got the lights, and we've got this magnificent board here that I can use during repairs, and it just gives a sort of slightly bigger surface area so I'm not having to balance bigger boards around. But that lack of sound recording is just so frustrating. Honestly, if this recorded sound, it would be the perfect microscope for any fixer or anyone really but that is a bit of a frustration I am going to use it I'm not just going to 
put it back in the box. I think I'm going to use it going forwards in my next few fix it videos. Depending on when things come out, I might have already used it on camera. I don't know. I've got so many videos that are being filmed or that I've got ready to go, but I just don't want to release them all in one go. So yeah, you might have already seen this on camera. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I'm very, very, very happy with it. I just wish it recorded sound. But, you know, I can sync up the sound with that method that I showed you. So it's it's not the end of the world, but we just, yeah, we just, just need sound, guys. Dear Mr. Joya Lens, can you put some sound in your microscope? That would be so, so helpful. Well, there you go. I really hope you found this video interesting and you've liked a look at this Joya Lens microscope. I'll stick some links into the description where you can buy it from. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, then definitely pick one up. I don't think I've got anything else to say. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But for now, it's game over.